Hi, Scott here for the MXQproject.com and in today's video I'm going to be giving you an overview of the MXQ Project Retro Gaming Experience build for the MXQ S805 running Libralec. I'm going to be giving an overview of the Internet Archive ROM Launcher, or IAL as we like to call it for short, an overview of the basics of the RetroArch system along with its interface and some of the things that you can get going with that, and the next part I'm particularly proud of is the emulation station that I've implemented into the build after months and months of work. So, let's get straight to it. So here we are at the main home screen of the build. If you've used any of our MXQ project builds before, this will look pretty similar to you. Um, if not, here's a quick overview. Here we have the favourites section. Anything you add to your favourite in Cody, as you know, will appear here. Here's our program section, we have handy little widgets here, we have a section for video add-ons as some of the programs used in the gaming build such as in the Archive ROM launcher are listed as video add-ons and here are all the program add-ons here, which we're not going to cover too much of in the video. But here's the main section, which is the gaming section. We have a widget here, quick access to any of the systems that are available to us. A list of consoles and different things. Port of Doom for example, this also contains Doom 2 I believe. And underneath we can go straight into ROM Collection Browser which I'm not going to go into in too much detail because there are plenty of videos and tutorials out there explaining how to use that. RetroArch we're going to get into a bit later and the Internet Archive ROM Launcher. And the main focus of today's video is going to be this which is the emulation station system which I'm going to show you in a very short while. But let's start with a basic overview of Internet Archive ROM Launcher again. I'm just going to open it up here from the main menu. And here we are in the main menu of Internet Archive ROM Launcher. As you can see, and as Matthew has covered in one of his previous videos, we have a list of systems and consoles. I'm going to go ahead for the purpose of this tutorial and show you Sega Genesis. Or Mega Drive if you come from the UK or Europe, which I think is a better name anyway. But there you go. Let's go ahead and launch Sonic the Hedgehog 2. When you come in and try to launch again here, you're going to be presented with this splash screen, which is a very nicely set up screen. It'll give you box art, fan art, things like that. Lots of pretty pictures. A synopsis of the game and these three options. You can close back to the menu. You can launch, which will download and launch the game straight away for you. Or you can download it, which will download it to a preset folder and you can access it later on. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and click launch here. I've already downloaded the file once before, but let's go ahead and download it again for the purposes of the video. I'm going to click yes. And this will download it to my ROM folder, but launch it automatically for me. Here you go. Pretty quick. This will vary depending on your connection speeds, of course. And here we go. Just as you remember it. All running up here. Here we are, I'm just using a wired Xbox 360 style joypad for this. And as you can see, everything runs pretty much exactly as you'd expect it to. If I wanted to come out again, all I need to do is click my left and right thumbsticks in. If you're using a keyboard, this will usually be defaulted at the F1 button. And this will bring us back to the RetroArch main menu. This is also called uh, the XMB ribbon. Looks a bit like your PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 type setup. If we go into quick menu, this will bring up the core options. And as you can see, the core that we use for the Sega Genesis games is Genesis plus GX. And you can find all your options and settings in here. We have cheat settings. There's also going to be, when this is released, cheat files for pretty much every game you can imagine. And we also have the core options here. And these will vary depending on what emulator you're using. Don't really need to change anything in here though for this type of system. If we want to exit to the main menu, we simply come back out here and click, click 
uh, quit RetroArch, which will bring us back to the main menu. Okay, I'm now going to go ahead and show you the crowning jewel of the MXQ Project Retro Gaming Experience, which is of course Emulation Station. So if we just click enter here. So here we are at the main screen of Emulation Station. As you can see here, it'll list all the different systems. If you have any different games for any different consoles, it will automatically detect those whenever you launch it, and it will add the corresponding menu item for it with a pretty little graphic like these are. And I have to say, I think this looks excellent. I think it's a great little system, and I think it looks really good, and it really organises everything really well. Um, I'll include a few games from the off, pre-installed into the build, so that you'll have access to this, because if you don't have the ROMs, in the corresponding folder required by Emulation Station, nothing will show up here. And it will tell you so when you try to launch Emulation Station that it hasn't detected anything and you won't be able to access it. Because Emulation Station, the way it works, is that you have to have the ROMs in specific folders so it knows where to look for them. But the way I've linked Internet Archive ROM Launcher up to it, whenever you download a game through that, it will put it in the correct folder and you don't have to worry about any of the technical side and does all of the work for you. So if we go into, say, Sega Mega Drive, it'll tell you how many games are available, and that's three. And here's some that I've got pre-installed. And we can also go across, and I've got PlayStation here, and I've got a few random titles to try as well. So let's launch up a PlayStation title this time. I'm going to launch up Micro Machines V3. It was always one of my favourites as a child. So here we are at the main menu of Micro Machines V3. Here we go. So as you can see, everything's running as it should. Despite me being absolutely terrible at this game. No lag there whatsoever. If we want to come out again, we'll click the thumbsticks in. Press B to come out of the quick menu and go down to quit retroarch and this will take us straight back into emulation station and that is pretty much it if we want to quit emulation station we can press start on the controller or the right hand control button on the keyboard and we can just choose quit one thing i will mention at the moment which i'm hoping to get fixed out at some point is that you in Emulation Station, there is the option to boot straight into RetroArch. I don't recommend you click that at the moment because it will just take you back to the Cody menu. And I need to work out the kinks with that and find out why it's doing that. But for now, we'll just click Quit. And this will take us straight back to our main home screen. So that is pretty much it for this video guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did like it, don't forget to drop us a like and a subscribe, or if you disliked it, drop us a dislike, that's absolutely fine as well. Remember to check out the website at mxqproject.com, and the forums at mxqproject.com slash forums. You can also check out our Facebook group, it is a request only group, but you can come and join us on Facebook, the link will be in the description. And I will see you in the next video.